Hey guys, good day to you all. How's it going? I'm Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at Kevin Garnett, the big ticket, and actually have a second look at his career and see how good he really, really was. Now, before we start with this episode, I want to give a quick shout out to my Patreons. Thanks a lot, you guys, for supporting the show. As always, it's really, really appreciated. And I would say enough said. Let's get right into today's episode. We all remember Kevin Garnett as this super intense, hyperactive NBA player, but there was a time where he was a little bit different. So let me take you back to the early 1990s, to the beginning of the career of Kevin Garnett. Before KG was the big ticket, an NBA All-Star and a true Hall of Famer, Kevin ended his high school career with Farragut in Chicago. There he was quickly recognized as one of the biggest talents over the last couple of years. We have to remember at that time there weren't too many players successfully drafted directly out of high school. But the Minnesota Timberwolves really saw the potential in Kevin Garnett. NBA legend Kevin McHale believed that Garnett would become a multiple all-star and after a serious workout session he was even more convinced. So at the 1995 NBA draft the Minnesota Timberwolves shocked the world and drafted the kid directly out of high school. With the The high school kid is the number five pick in the NBA draft. Kevin Garnett, 19 years old. Won't be 20 until next year, so he's a, a young 19. Parade All-American first team, Mr. Basketball in Illinois and in South Carolina. He was in Malden, South Carolina for a time before going to Chicago. The story, you know, why is he going to the NBA now? His test scores were not high enough, did not want to do the junior college route. He applied for early entry to the NBA draft, and he's the, the fifth early entry candidate in a row now to be selected in this draft. Many people were skeptical about this 19-year-old kid. The Minnesota Timberwolves needed somebody who could help right away. They were at the bottom of the league and could not afford to continue their losing streak and their losing reputation that they have built over the last couple of years. But surprisingly, Kevin quickly showed that he could play at the highest level. Even though his body wasn't ready, you could see right away that this boy had some serious skills. He smiled a lot, was a lot of fun, but his opponents quickly had to realize that yeah, they couldn't be fooled by his fun personality. He's a guy who loves to shoot the basketball. Ryan gets the lead back to Minnesota. Wills trailing by three. Chad Irvin, Trent Tucker, Tom Anna here, and Kevin Garnett cuts it down to one. Wide open is Kevin Garnett. Get out of the way, David Wesley. If you can't play in the air, you better get out the way. In his rookie season, Garnett finished with 10 points and 6.3 rebounds and gathered some Rookie of the Year votes. The following year, he would be joined by explosive point guard Stephon Marbury, who fit perfectly to Garnett's playing style. The two looked like a cooler version of John Stockton and Karl Malone and put the Timberwolves back on the map. Finally, there was a chance for the T-Wolves to be somebody for the first time. Marbury, a guard who could drop 20 in a good night, but also would find Garnett when he was open and KG the perfect LAU partner. But this unfortunately would be a very short period since Stefan Marbury left the Timberwolves right away since he felt that he wanted to be Batman and not Robin. KG was very disappointed, but he turned into an NBA All-Star himself and helped the Timberwolves to make the playoffs for the first time. The next couple of years, Kevin worked really hard on his game and what McHale predicted at first became reality. Kevin was a poster child for the new generation of power forwards, a big that not could only play with his back to the basket, but also shoot the mid-range jumper and of course handle the ball. What made KJ even better was his defensive presence. He was a solid shot blocker, but his footwork was sensational, which made him able to guard even smaller players. But no matter how good KG became, his team always got kicked out of the playoffs really early. Even though the Timberwolves had a solid roster at one point, with point guard Sam Cassell and wing player Latrell Sprewell, it was never enough for the big one. 
Now, after playing so many years in Minnesota, Kevin Garnett, the big ticket, had to finally realize that he will not win an NBA championship in Minnesota. So he was close to actually join the Los Angeles Lakers and Kobe Bryant, but at the last second, everything changed and he became a Boston Celtic. This was a huge thing back in the days. A player that was averaging 23 points and almost 14 rebounds plus 5 assists would join two other future Hall of Famers in Paul Pierce and Ray Allen. The big three were born. For Kevin Garnett, who was 30 at that point, this would be the final chance to win an NBA championship. Playing-wise, Garnett would not have to carry the entire offensive load by himself since the Celtics had a very deep roster. The big ticket, who already was considered to be one of the best defenders in the entire NBA, made sure that he became the centerpiece on defense, plus also showing his offensive skill work. Al struggles, throws it out, Telfair. Knocked away! Kevin Garnett. Garnett came out of the locker room injured and performed. Garnett takes it in high and comes down hard. The big ticket. Puts a dagger into the Rockets in their 22-game winning streak. Celts get a hand on that pass. Garnett's got the loose ball in the middle. Finds Eddie House throwing it up. Kevin Garnett! You saw that one coming. Garnett calling for it as soon as he got the ball back to Eddie House. KG with the fire. Brown. Oh, KG with the block. Said, get out of my neighborhood. In the 2008 season, Kevin Garnett would finally win his NBA title. The Celtics gelled nicely together and they had this championship aura and mentality throughout the entire season. Kevin led by example and hustled after every loose ball and rightfully also won the Defensive Player of the Year award. And to make it even better, what more can you ask for than having the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers in the NBA Finals? For the first time since 1986, a championship is won here in the city of Boston for a Boston team. We've seen, seen the Patriots, we've seen the Red Sox, but it hasn't been done here since the Celtics did it 22 years ago. Allen would head to the locker room. Still first quarter, Wilbon, you said KG had to come up large. Did he? No, he came up like a giant. 26 points, 14 rebounds, and when he got the ball, he was not passive tonight. He looked for a shot right here in the paint, back somebody in. Even if they bumped him out, he still got his shot. He had 11 off. points. Ray Allen loves it. Under a minute left in the second. So, JB, Garnett's not tough. No jump shot on this play, Stewart. Wilbon and I have been killing this guy for not getting the paint. Hard drive, great hang time, and a circus one in finish. He set the tone. Paul Pierce one. gives Doc a red bath of Gatorade. Celtics celebrate a 131-92 victory. And Doc Rivers has some kind words for Kobe Bryant. The big three celebrate with the man who brought them together, Danny Ainge, don't mess up his hair. And then Kevin Garnett hugs Celtic legend Bill Russell. They have a bond, a friendship that is as thick as you will find. The Celtics win their... Unfortunately, this would be the only title Kevin Garnett would win. He would stay another four years with the Celtics before he then joined the Brooklyn Nets and then end his career with the team that drafted him, the Minnesota Timberwolves. So how good was KG the big ticket really? You can like him, you can hate him, but one thing you have to, you have to respect him and admit that he was a sensational player. He played both ends of the floor and he could do almost everything. In today's NBA, Prime Garnett would probably destroy most players physically and mentally. All right, you guys, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out my podcast, The Basketball Time Machine, on Spotify and on iTunes. And also, if you like old school black music, check out my radio station, The Jam Time Machine. You will find it on www.jamtimemachine.com. So, you guys, be healthy, take care, and see you next time. Anything's possible. Anything's possible! This show is brought to you by Jam Time Machine Radio, the finest of old school black and pop music. Check out www.jamtimemachine.com and listen to non-stop old school black and pop music. Jam Time Machine Radio, more than just music.